Hi, this is Brian Forster, and today we're exploring the Julio C. Teo Museum of Anthropology and Archaeology in Lima, Peru. It's the largest museum of its kind in Peru, and of course has these conventional, if somewhat misguided, interpretations of life in Peru, say, 6,000 plus years ago. You see dioramas like this in almost every museum in the world, and they're not necessarily reflective of actual history. Now, this is more or less at the entrance of the museum, and we're going to be looking at this stele, which has almost perfectly flat surfaces, so it's quite likely that the Chavin culture that did the inscription actually found this megalithic slab and carved the images on the surface of it typical of what we do find in Peru. And now we're going to enter the actual display of the Chavin culture. The museum is divided into the different ancient cultures of Peru. And of interest here is this very old photograph. Look at the fine stone craftsmanship on the left hand side as compared to the much rougher work above it and this indicates there are two different time periods of construction, which is typical of what we see in Peru. You have the Chavin culture, which did the relatively crude work, and then before that you have the possibility of a megalithic presence. We see this at other sites such as Machu Picchu and Oyente Tambo, etc., where you have megalithic elements and then the later known, for example, Inca elements. And this is another massive sculpture that is inside the pyramidal complex at Chavin de Huantar in the highlands of Peru. Now we're in the Paracas culture section. The Paracas, of course, are the ones famous with the elongated skulls, but you probably didn't know that the Paracas territory covered so much land from Chincha in the north all the way down to Nazca in the south. The Nazca were the, or the um, Paracas were the first culture of the Nazca area and created many of the lines and geoglyphs that the Nazca people are more famous for. But the majority were created by the Paracas. So once again, you see the size of the territory from actually Cañete in the north down to Nazca in the south. So a vast territory of covered by the Paracas people. The area is very desert-like, but there are very nice pockets of agriculture that date back thousands of years. And these are some of the magnificent textiles created by the Paracas people between about 800 BC and 100 AD. Some of the finest textiles ever made in all of the Americas and the condition of them is exceptional. Notice that you can still see the bright colors after 2,000 years. That's because of the incredible preservation of the area due to its desert nature. It rains only about half an inch a year in the Paracas Nazca area, so preservation is almost perfect. And then, of course, the famous elongated skulls most of which are the result of cranial deformation, but the one at the very end looks more like it's natural in formation. There you see cranial deformation, the flattening of the forehead, the back of the skull. And here again, but then this skull is quite a bit larger and you can see it has much more of a naturally curved shape. So I think a certain percentage of the Paracas were born with elongated skulls, and the DNA results that we have also indicate that they were not indigenous to the coast of Peru, but in fact may have come from Eurasia 3,000 plus years ago. And then these are depictions of what the Paracas looked like. They painted and tattooed their faces, very interesting colors, almost similar to stuff that you find in ancient India. 
And here again, some of the phenomenal textiles in astonishingly great condition. And again, more. There's actually a wig of dark red hair. The ancient Paracas people did have red hair. They were not black-haired Native American people originally. So that also indicates that their DNA was not indigenous originally to the coast of Peru. And there is a tomb of one of the Paracas with a very, very large elongated skull. And these are the ceramics of the Nazca culture. The Nazca culture came right after the Paracas culture and occupied the same area. So you can see where the Nazca area is here. And this is a pyramidal complex called Kahuachi, one of the largest adobe pyramid complexes in the world, quite close to Nazca City. And now we're looking at the Vicus culture of the central coast of Peru. Each culture had its own distinct style of pottery. And then the Salinar culture and the Viru culture. You see there's much more to ancient Peru than just the uh, Inca. Then we have the Moche of the north coast of Peru. And the Rima or Lima or Rimac culture. That's where Lima gets its name from the Rimac people. And the Cajamarca culture of northern Peru. Again, a very distinct ceramic style. And the Requai culture. And now we're going to go in and observe artifacts of the Wadi culture, which was a large civilization that uh, preceded the Inca. They existed approximately from 700 AD to about 1000 AD, when their civilization collapsed, likely due to climate change. And that allowed for the rise of the later, much more famous Inca people whose territory was in fact very, very extensive, much more than any other preceding culture in Peru or probably all of South America. And this shows you the extent of influence of the Wadi people. Much of the highlands and the coast of Peru. And again, some more artifacts from the Wadi culture. Once again, their pottery very distinct, but actually quite possibly influenced by the uh, Tiwanaku people of present-day Bolivia. As you can see, the museum is relatively old. I think it was built in the 19th century. And now we're going to visit other cultures. The Chancay, who were located close to the capital of Peru, present-day Peru, Lima. Once again, you see a very different ceramic style, mainly colors of white and brown and black. And then this is another culture. This is from northern Peru, the coastal area. This is where the Chimu and the Moche people lived. They built quite massive adobe pyramids, some of which are still in existence today.
Uh, this is an example of what one of the adobe pyramids would have looked like originally. Very colorful, red and yellow. Also others had white and sometimes even pink. And this is what a noble of the Chimu or Moche looked like. They were profound metallurgists and made very, very fine jewelry in silver and gold. So now we're traveling down the coast of Peru. Trujillo, which is in the north. Juarez, Juarez which is in the central part. Paramonga, which is a pyramidal location, adobe and then the capital city of Lima. And now we're going to see the Inca. This is a scale model of Machu Picchu. Now we're going to go in and see some of the artifacts of the Inca culture, including there on the left and coming to the center, the famous Kipu accounting system of knotted cords. And more Inca style ceramics, again, quite distinct from the look of other ancient cultures in Peru. And finally, a large-scale model of what Machu Picchu looked like when it was in the Inca times and even today. You can see that it covers a huge amount of territory.